this project we're going to draw this small mechanical part referred to here as a lock washer. You can see that its units are in inches. The unit is in decimals with a precision of two places to the right of the decimal place. It's also a fairly small object. Its overall length is 5 and its overall height is determined by the diameter of the outer circle shown here having a diameter of 4. I can see that the object is drawn using a rectangle and two circles all drawn around a concentric center point. So this will be my construction method. To start with a center point, draw the circles and rectangles, then trim and fillet the corners. I'm going to start a new drawing and I'm going to use my own template so I'll go to my AutoCAD drawing files and I'm going to use my simple title block template. You can use this same template uh, you should be able to download it somewhere below. And I'm going to start in model space and I'm going to start with my rectangle. So I will get from my tool panel I'm going to get my rectangle command and in this case I'm going to click to start or designate the first corner of my rectangle and then I'm going to right click and say that I want to designate the dimensions. So in this case it wants specify the length for the rectangle. In this case it's going to be 5 and the width is going to be 2. And again I have to put it, pull it into the quadrant that I would like it to be in and click my mouse once to end the command. Now I want to have some circles drawn and these circle centers need to be in the exact center of this rectangle. So I'm going to start a circle command and I'm going to check down here I'm going to go to my object snaps right click go to settings make sure that my object snap tracking is on and that my midpoints are turned on. So I'm going to track from the midpoint of the rectangle here. You can see my tracking line starting up. Now I'm going to go to the midpoint of the height of my rectangle and I'm going to start a tracking point from there. Now you can see where these two tracking points intersect is the center of the rectangle. I'm going to click for my circle center and my first diameter it's asking for a radius by default. I'll say D for diameter and 3 for my first circle. I'm just going to hit enter on the keyboard to start a second circle. It's going to be from this same center point. In this case the diameter, I'll hit D for diameter, is going to be 4. And so I've drawn both of these circles concentric to a center point in the middle of the rectangle. Next I'm going to trim some objects. Start again. Next I'm going to trim some of the lines that I don't need. I'll activate my trim command. And for my cutting edge I'm just going to hit enter on the keyboard and make all of the objects a cutting edge. So in this case I can remove these line segments and these parts of the circle and these parts of the outer circle to trim my object up. Hit enter to end my trim command. I'm now going to use my fillet command to round the corners on the edges of what's left of the rectangle. So I'll start my fillet command and I have to set the radius. In this case it's 0.5 so I'm going to right click, choose radius off the pop-up menu and set it for 0.5. Hit enter. And now I could start but I'm going to have multiple 
fillets that I need to use. So I'm going to right click again and say multiple. I could also just enter M from the keyboard so that my fillet command continues. And I can fill at all of these corners at 0.5. Hit enter to end the command. Now I'm going to undo my fillets. And let's look at one other way that we could use our fillet command. You notice that what's left of the rectangle are polylines. When I draw a rectangle or a polygon, they're always drawn as polylines, meaning that they are continuous lines, not line segments. Because of that, I could click my fillet command, right click, set the radius to 0.5, and in this case I could say that I'm doing a polyline. Now, notice that when I come to my polyline, it will fill it both of the corners at once. So I will repeat fill it and I'm going to polyline again and I'll do this side. And I could fill it both of those edges or both of those corners at the same time.